So in the last video, we learned how to take the motion of an object and represent it using these position versus time graphs, these velocity versus time graphs, and these acceleration versus time graphs. So I recommend you watch that video before watching this video because we're gonna build upon those concepts. So if we have this baseball with this mo movement, we see at this time zero second instance, it's at the zero meter mark. Then we see one second later, it's at the two meter mark. Another second later, it's at the four meter mark. And another second later, it's at the six meter mark. So we could represent this motion using this position versus time graph. And we could represent this motion using this velocity versus time graph. And again, we learned how to do that in the previous video. However, something important to realize is the area under this velocity versus time graph tells us the distance traveled during that time interval. So what do I mean? Well, if we look at this velocity versus time graph, we see the area underneath it is around six. Again, we see this is two meters per second, and this is for three seconds. So two times three is six. So this has an area underneath this curve of six. So therefore, if the area underneath this curve is six, then we know during this time interval, this ball traveled six meters. And I know this is a little tricky and abstract, but the point is, when you have a velocity versus time graph, the area underneath that velocity versus time graph tells you the distance traveled during this time interval. So again, the area underneath this velocity versus time graph is six. This is an area of six. Three times two is six. So this is an area of six. So therefore, the distance traveled is six meters during this three seconds. And we know this. If we were to look at this, we would see after this three seconds, we're at the six meter mark. So therefore, during this three second time interval, it's traveled six meters because that's the area underneath the curve. So again, the, so the point is what I'm saying is during this first three second time interval, the area under the curve is six. So therefore, during this first three second time interval, the ball traveled six meters. That's exactly what I'm saying. And we can prove this because we know what we're doing is we're taking the velocity and we're multiplying it by a time, the time, and it gives us the distance traveled, the delta x, which is a, just a distance, the, the delta x. So if we rearrange this and divide both sides by time, we get the definition of velocity. We know velocity equals delta x divided by t, distance divided by time. So again, this is the definition of velocity. So if we rearrange this, we get this equation. So it makes sense. If you take the velocity and multiply it by the time, you get a distance traveled. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking a velocity and multiplying it by a time, just in the form of a graph. So let's try another example. Let's say we have this ball that's moving and it has a certain motion. And let's say we represent that motion using this position versus time graph. We learn how to go from a position versus time graph to a velocity versus time graph. So let's say we have this velocity versus time graph. Again, remember the area under a velocity versus time graph tells us the distance traveled during that time interval. So again, let's try this example. We see this is four meters per second and this is four seconds. So this would have an area of 16 because four times four is 16. However, it's the area under this curve. So the area under this curve would just be this region, which would just be half. So again, we know four times four is 16. So that's this entire region, but we're interested in the area underneath this velocity versus time graph. So that would represent this area. So again, just using some simple geometry, we know this area would be eight. So this would be eight meters. So therefore we know the ball traveled eight meters during this time interval. During this four second time interval, the ball traveled eight meters. Cause again, the area underneath the velocity versus time graph, that area tells you the distance traveled. So again, simple geometry would tell us that this area is eight. So therefore the ball traveled eight meters during this time interval. 
However, something else important to realize is the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph tells us the change in velocity during that time interval. So what do I mean? So again, if we were to find the area underneath this acceleration versus time graph, this area would give us four. Because again, we have one meters per second squared times four seconds. We're multiplying the acceleration by the time. So again, if we do that, that would give us the area underneath this curve. So that would give us four. Again, this is four seconds times one meters per second squared. So this area would be four. So therefore the change in velocity would be four meters per second. So therefore during this time interval, this four second time interval, the velocity changed by four meters per second. Cause again, the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph tells us the change in velocity. So again, this area is four, so the change in velocity is four meters per second. And we can see that with this velocity versus time graph. Initially, we start at zero meters per second, and then at the end of the four second interval, we're at four meters per second. So we have a change in velocity of four meters per second. We start at zero meters per second, then we end at four meters per second. So during this time interval, the change in velocity is four meters per second. And that's what we get, because again, the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph tells us the change in velocity during that time interval. So again, I know this is kind of abstract, but with enough practice, this will make sense. But again, so we see we start at zero meters per second, then we end at four meters per second. So therefore we know the change in velocity is four meters per second. And we can determine that using this graph. And we can prove this. Because again, what are we doing? We're taking the acceleration and multiplying it by time to get the change in velocity. And if we divide both sides by t by time, we get the definition of acceleration. We know acceleration equals the change in velocity over time. So again, this is just this equation rearranged. So, so that makes sense that if we take the acceleration and multiply it by time, we get the change in velocity. That that's essentially what this equation is telling us. And so that's essentially what's going on. You take the acceleration and multiply it by the time that gives us the area, which represents the change in velocity. Take the acceleration multiplied by time, you get the change in velocity. Take the acceleration multiplied by time, you get the change in velocity. So again, I know it's a little abstract, but hopefully with enough examples, it will start to make sense. So again, I know this is a tricky concept, but as long as you memorize these two rules, you'll do okay. And the key point is the area underneath this velocity versus time graph tells us the distance traveled during that time interval and the area underneath this acceleration versus time graph tells us the change in velocity during that time interval. So let's just focus on these first two seconds. So let's focus on these first two seconds time interval. We see the area underneath the velocity versus time graph is four, so therefore the distance traveled is four meters. Just something you need to memorize. And again, we see the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph is four, so therefore the change in velocity during this time interval is four meters per second. And we can see that. We see we start at zero meters per second, then we end at four meters per second, so the change in velocity is four meters per second. So, so that's what this is telling us. So what about this particular time interval? Well, again, the area underneath the velocity versus time graph is 16. So therefore the distance traveled is 16 meters during this time interval. And what about the area underneath this acceleration versus time graph? Well, we have an area of zero. So therefore the change in velocity was zero meters per second. And again, we can see that we start at four meters per second, we end at four meters per second. So the change in velocity is zero meters per second. And that's what this is telling us. So what about this time interval? Well, again, we see the area underneath the velocity versus time graph is eight. This is an area of eight. So therefore the distance traveled is eight meters during this time interval. However, what about the area underneath this acceleration versus time graph? Well, here we see the area is negative four because we have an acceleration of negative one. So we have an acceleration of negative one and we have a time of four. So therefore negative one times four equals negative four. So this area is negative four meters per second. 
And again, so therefore we know the change in velocity is negative four meters per second. So again, and we can see that. We see we start at four meters per second and we end at zero meters per second. So the change in velocity is four meters per second minus four meters per second. It decreases by four meters per second. So that's what this area is telling us. So what about during this time interval? Well, again, the area underneath the velocity versus time graph tells us the distance traveled. So this area underneath the velocity versus time graph is eight. So therefore the, the ball traveled eight meters. But notice this is minus four meters per second. So therefore the ball went in the minus direction eight meters during this time interval. So what about the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph? Well, again, we see during this time interval, the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph is four. But notice this is minus four because this is minus one meters per second squared times four seconds. So therefore, because you're multiplying a minus by a positive, that gives us a minus four meters per second. So therefore, because the area underneath this acceleration versus time graph is four, we know the ball decreased its velocity by four meters per second. And again, we can see that. We can see the ball started at zero meters per second, and then it ended at minus four meters per second. So again, we can see that. And again, that's what this area is telling us. This area tells us that the ball decreased by four meters per second during this particular time interval. So again, I know this is a tricky concept, but as long as you memorize these two rules, you'll be golden. So I recommend taking a screenshot of this image and, and it has all the information that we've gone over for this example. But again, the key thing to realize is that the area underneath the velocity versus time graph tells us the distance traveled. And we prove that with, with this equation. And also remember that the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph tells us the change in velocity. So again, during this 16 second time interval, we see this ball traveled 20 meters because again, the area underneath this curve is 20 meters because again, here we have positive four, here we have positive 16, here we have positive eight, and here we have negative eight. So again, these would cancel and we're left with 20 meters. So therefore, during this 16 second interval, the area underneath the curve is positive 20. So therefore, we know during the 16 second interval, the ball traveled 20 meters. And also in terms of this acceleration versus time graph, we know during this 16 second interval, we know the area underneath the curve is negative four because here it's positive four, here it's zero, here it's negative four, and here it's negative four. So this would all cancel and we're left with negative four. So therefore we know the area underneath the curve of this acceleration versus time graph is negative four during the 16 second interval. So therefore we know during the 16 second interval, the velocity decreased by four meters per second. And again, we can see that. We can see the ball started at zero meters per second. Then after the 16 second interval, it ends at minus four meters per second. So we start at zero, we end at minus four. So therefore we know the velocity decreased by four meters per second. And again, that's what this is telling us. Cause again, the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph tells us the change in velocity during that time interval.